Hey guys, it's Ashley and I'm coming at you right now while I'm currently editing this video because I wanted to make two quick notes before the video starts. The first of which, every time I mention this series name in this video that's upcoming, I will be saying Keepers of the Lost Cities, but I know now that I've had to listen to myself say it a dozen times while editing that it is Keeper of the Lost Cities, not Keepers. So just keep that in mind, I will be saying it wrong, I know. And the second thing that I wanted to mention was something that some people pointed out to me in my original reading vlog where I read the first book and that is in regards to to Sophie's nervous habit of pulling out her eyelashes. Some people said that this could be a sign of a mental disorder called trichotillomania, which I did not even know was a thing, and I don't know if that's what Shannon Messenger intended when writing Sophie because it's never explicitly stated in the books, but I do just want to give a massive apology if any of the, you know, fun that I made of, you know, Sophie's nervous habit in my reading vlog made any of you uncomfortable. I'm really sorry, and I am being much more aware of it as I read the books and continue through the series. Now you can go ahead and get into the video. I hope you guys enjoy. Hey guys, it's Ashley. I just finished filming a video and I should be probably editing it, but instead I've decided we're going to start binging the rest of Keepers of the Lost Cities, because why not? It's not like I have a million other responsibilities I should be getting to right now, but instead I'm doing this. No, in all seriousness, I recently got the notification that my copy of Exile, which is book two, that I had on hold at the library recently released to me, so I I started reading it and I really like it so far and I figured before I got any further I should start vlogging. <laughs> so let me go get my Kindle that way we can start talking about it. So I'm actually currently on page 170. I was going to stop around page 100 before I updated you, but then I just kept reading because I can't stop myself from reading. And also the book starts before the school year starts and I really just wanted to get to the part where school started. I love, I love the school and I love her friend group. So I really just wanted to get to the part where they came in and we're almost there. So close, so close, we're almost there. This book pretty much picks up exactly where the first one left off. Sophie's still kind of struggling with the same things of like not really knowing what's going on and nobody will tell her what's happening and it's still annoying, but like uh, we'll find out eventually. Uh, hopefully. Not much has really happened in the story so far. The main things that I've figured out are that apparently the black swan we still are confused as to whether they're actually good or bad. Grady and Edeline seem to think that they're bad because they were the ones that they suspect killed their daughter Jolie. And Sophie seems to think that they're good because they were the ones who rescued her from the kidnappers. I'm still confused as to who these kidnappers are. I'm still confused as to who the Black Swan is. Also, I realized in my vlog where I read the first book, I accidentally mixed up Jolie and Prentice's wife. I kept thinking and like having this theory that Jolie was Prentice's wife and that they were were actually Sophie's parents and I think that I really messed that up because Prentice had a wife but she died and then Jolie was Gray and Edeline's daughter who had nothing to do with that but yeah I got kind of confused with that in the first video and somebody pointed it out to me and I realized that I messed up so I just wanted to clear the air. At the point that I'm at now uh, they are doing the ceremony, the opening ceremony for the school or whatever where she has to put on a costume and they have to dance or something stupid. I have no idea. Like I said, I'm just really eager to actually find out what the heck is happening in this story, like what the backstory is with all of these characters. I want to meet more people who will actually tell Sophie things and that's what I'm here for at this point. I'm not here for Alden and Grady and whoever else who don't want to share the information with her because she's too young to understand. Like that's what got her into these messes in the first book like I said in my first vlog. So if you're not going to learn from your mistakes and actually tell this child something, every problem that she gets into is your fault. Just putting it out there. I honestly can't remember if I've read anything else important, but if I do remember, I will come back and share it with you. But for now, I'm just gonna keep reading and see what happens. And hopefully by the time I finish this story, Everblaze, which is the third book, will be available for me to read and I can just go into that. And I do know that a majority of you voted on me getting the physical copies of these books and I have decided that I will get them. It's just a matter of waiting because I wanna actually film a come book shopping with me vlog and I want to buy it then. So I'm just going to wait to do that and in the meantime, read the ebooks. Guys, I think I've turned into a granny since the last time you saw me. It's only been literally like a day since I updated this vlog. I've gotten pretty far into the book, so I'll talk about that soon. But I also managed to crochet this entire hat and add these little flowers. Don't ask me how I did that in the time that I was given. Great minds can achieve a lot 
when they procrastinate everything they should be doing. Anyway, but back to the book. So let me share what I have achieved in the second book in Kingdom of the Lost K Keeper of the Lost Cities. I'm on chapter 42, I'm on page 369, and I am 62% of the way through the book. These books are like so fast paced, they're so quick, it's like as soon as one chapter's done, the next one picks up right where that one left off, it continues the scene, things just happen, fast, 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 fast. That's how this book is, and that's what I like about it. I like a middle grade series that is very fast and fun and adventurous, except the things that have happened in this book so far have not been very fun or adventurous, but at least they've been fast. Things that I'll say that like won't spoil anything, something happened that I was actually not anticipating, and I'm not really sure how I feel about it just yet. I'm confused as to where it's taking the story essentially and how this book is going to finish. I'm already 60% of the way through the book and we just started school. Like I remember in the last clip I was talking to you guys, I said that I was excited because I was just trying to get through the beginning of the book so that I could get to when Sophie gets back into school because I love the magic school in this book. But I'm 60% of the way through and they're just now like starting classes. Like I haven't even gotten to her first class with the the council guy person. I don't remember what his name is, but I haven't even gotten there. Something that I do wanna talk about that's spoilery that I totally forgot to talk about in my last vlog because this actually happened at the end of the last book and I don't know how I didn't mention it. It's and Sophie. Back at the end of the first book, you know, when Sophie was fading away, he like got himself into her head and now like they can transmit to one another but like something's wrong with Sophie because like his transmissions are coming through really loud and then also she keeps like blacking out whenever she sees bright light. People are talking outside and you're hearing everything. So Fitz can now talk to Sophie mind to mind, right? But the whole thing that's happening with Alden has kind of made Fitz like Sophie's enemy in a way. Like he's trying to find somebody to blame, so he's blaming her, which like, I don't, I don't know. I just want them to be friends. I just want Sophie to like figure out what the heck is happening and like, you know, help Alden so that everybody can be friends again. Like, I don't like it when everybody's mad at each other, especially not Fitz, because if Fitz isn't around in the book, then that means that there's less of Keith and Keith is my favorite character at this point, so this is just a lose-lose situation for me. But anyway, yeah, this whole thing with Alden and how he, his mind like was broken or it was lost, but then Sophie was able to pull him back. But then it broke because of the guilt that he felt over Prentice when they went and they broke Prentice's mind. I'm so lost. Apparently guilt is enough to like kill an elf. But I guess it's kind of interesting that in a world where nobody really dies and nobody has to really experience death and what it's like to lose somebody, that it does affect them in such a strong way. So I do kind of like that. I think that's really interesting. Um, I'm just confused as to what the hell is happening with Alden. So things that I still wanna see when it comes to what's happening in this book. Number one, I wanna see the Vackers, Fitz and Alden's family or whatever, I wanna see them be okay. Like I want them, them to be okay. And then I also wanna know what's happening with the school. Like what is the plot of this book? What, what are we going to accomplish by the end of this book in the next 40% of this book? That's what I wanna know and that's what I'm confused about. I don't know, for a series where the first book was about the magic school, I just want more about the magic school. If anything else comes to me, I will let you know, but for now, I'm going to keep reading because I just can't remember anything else I wanted to tell you guys. So I'll be back soon. Oh my God, they're treating this child like she is a robot. They're like the second that her like crazy powers stop working, they're like, oh, she's malfunctioning. Oh, she's damaged. Like, excuse me, you are grown adults. You need to stop. Anyway, that was all that I wanted to say in this update. Like, I'm just at this part where it's like, she had this inflicting session with Counselor Bront and he was able to get in her head and therefore she's malfunctioning. Excuse me? Okay, so I take back what I said before. I really like not having Fitz around because every single chapter so far since I said that has had Keef in it and I'm here for this. It seems as though when he doesn't have anything to do with Fitz, he spends his time with Sophie which is better for me. No, but I love him. He's like the comedic relief that we need. He's also like smarter than people give him credit for. So um, I love him. I love seeing him. I'm here for this. We're getting like deeper and deeper into understanding like what is happening with Sophie and what's happening with the black swan. But I feel like there's still just like so much that we don't know. It's like every time we get like a little bit of the puzzle piece, I feel like we put it in 
we, we you know, we, we put the piece into the puzzle to finish the puzzle, and then it seems like the camera zooms out and you realize there's a bigger puzzle to solve. You know what I mean? It's so frustrating because I just want to know what the heck is happening. Like, why is Sophie, you know, having these reactions to the light? Why do people think that she's malfunctioning like she's a robot? You know, what does the black swan want? Why will they not tell her anything? Why is she missing memories? Why do they keep sending her notes telling her not to look any further but then send her another one that says face your fears as if they're just like, you know, hypocritically going to forget that they sent her a note that said don't do anything? Like don't do anything but face your fears at the same time. How does that make sense? But in other news, I also really like how Sylvani loves Keith as well. I think that Sylvani and I could be great friends if she wasn't a fictional alicorn that was one of the weirdest things that i've said in a while but okay also oh my god we had alden's funeral i totally forgot to mention that hit that scene was so sad alden's funeral Ugh, i just like wanted to cry i wanted to start crying and i don't even care about him that much but i care about the people who care about him so therefore by extension i care about him and it made me want to cry and then sophie saw wiley and wiley said something about like you know you're supposed to fix this or or what are you waiting for and she's like i don't know what am i waiting for because she doesn't know what the hell is going on either. So anyway, I am now 79% of the way through, page 471, and I'm at the part where Sophie just got a second message from the Black Swan. I'm at a loss for words. I just want to know what the hell is happening right now. Okay guys, so it looks like I'm finishing this book tonight because I am 91% of the way through, and the one thing that I have been waiting for when waiting to happen is finally about to happen so i'm definitely gonna keep reading but i wanted to come back on here before i finished and just give my thoughts as to like the big climactic moment of this book i just want to know if every book is going to end with sophie and whoever happens to be with her at the time whether that be dex whether that be keith whether that be somebody else in the upcoming books is everybody who's with sophie at the end of these books going to have this big near-death experience and um and almost die before the book ends i just want to know like there are no doubts in my mind that that's what's going to happen but still i'm just a bit concerned for their mental health and well-being but anyway so we finally got to get some answers very few answers but some of them sophie and keith who i love by the way always need to add that in when i talk about him just in case you guys forget so sophie and keith and sylvanie the horse uh flew to this cave in the middle of the ocean where the black swan was going to heal her and fix her so they end up in this place um she goes in with mr forkel who was her neighbor when she was living with humans and he kind of gives us some information first he makes sure to let her know that they did not kill Jolie, which was something that I figured did not happen, but I guess we just needed to hear that for sure. So they didn't kill Jolie, and that was not what the message meant, the you don't know who you're dealing with that they sent to Grady when he wouldn't join the Black Swan. I don't know how he could have taken that in any other way. I don't know what other way the Black Swan meant. I don't know who set the fire. I don't know what kind of info Jolie had that she needed to die over. So yeah, Mr. Furkle goes on and on and on about all of this stuff about how like, yes, I created you and we knew that we would have to sacrifice some people like Prentice so that you could bring them back and your mind is supposed to be impenetrable but there's a way through and I'm the only one who's supposed to know the way through because my mind is impenetrable and also we gave you horse DNA <laughs> and that's that's why you have brown eyes, Sophie, because you're part horse. Surprise! Now let's stab you with a giant needle after I give you limbium, which will make you almost die so that we can help you. We're gonna nearly kill you so that we can help you, and also you're part horse. Now that I'm saying all of that back out loud, I can't not, like, die laughing. <laughs> I'm like... What the actual hell? But anyway, after you get over that magnificent reveal, she gets dumped back to Keith, even though she's still kind of like in the semi-unconscious state. And as she is trying to escape, while she's still 
partly unconscious. I don't know why they didn't just wait to escape. Like maybe let's, oh, Sophie, let's wait until you're feeling a little bit better until we like, I don't know, get on the back of this horse and get the fuck out of here. Instead of doing that, she's like, no, we gotta go now. And when they go now, they end up almost getting kidnapped by not three people this time, five people this time. It's like the kidnappers are learning. But apparently Sophie and her friends are learning as well because Keith had a, like a weapon. He had a, a melder or a welder or whatever it's called. He had throwing stars. He was ready. He was a ninja waiting in pursuit and he got him. Granted, the horse still got hurt and Sophie and he almost died, but he got him. She somehow teleported her way out of there because again, she's half horse and they made it back. Something that I'm really excited to see, which probably is, you guys are gonna be like, why are you excited to see this? Something that I'm really excited to see is the way that the council and Bront decides to regulate what she can do. Because clearly she's going to be waking these people up. She's going to, you know, bring Alden's mind back, bring Pen Prentice's mind back. We're gonna learn some more stuff. So I'm eager to see how the council is going to try to regulate her because she's a human being. This is her ability, but like they're also there prisoners in a way like the people whose minds they've broken are like kind of government prisoners so it's like I, I, like they both have a reason to like want to be able to control this ability like Sophie shouldn't just be able to wake up whoever the hell she wants for the hell of it because like people can actually be bad people but also they shouldn't be able to be like no you can only use this when we tell you to because that's just mean and rude and she's a child. I love this sort of conversation about how when the people in charge are starting to do things that are corrupt or starting to do things that they believe are for the greater good but are really going to harm some people over others and stuff like that you know like is are, should they really be in charge like how much should we you know trust them how much of our free will should we hand over like that kind of thing i don't know if that makes any sense to you guys but i really like that concept um they explored that in renegades a lot and that was something that i really loved especially about book two but anyway okay i have 10 percent of this book left i'm finally getting to the part that i've been waiting for i'm going to read and get back to you soon Yay. Pooh Bear, how do you feel about the end of that book? Same. Anyway, I finished the book. Woo! And I did like it. It ended pretty much exactly as I thought it would, so I wasn't like surprised by anything, but it was just a really good ending to the story, and um, I'm eager to see what the next one is like, and also I just realized that the front cover features Sophie and Keith, and I didn't even realize that it was Keith. For some reason I thought it was Fitz again, but it's Keith. He has blonde hair. Having my camera at this angle kind of worries me because I'm afraid that my tripod is just going to like tip and the camera's gonna hit me in the face. So let's cross our fingers that doesn't happen. But anyways, so Alden is back and Fitz doesn't hate her anymore and um, the gang is all back and Sylvani is in the sanctuary where she belongs and Sophie can teleport because again, she's half horse. But there's still so much that we don't know. Like there's so much about, about I don't know, everything, like literally everything. Like what the hell is the goal of the black swan? That's what I wanna know. I still don't understand who the antagonistic force is. That's what's really making me mad is that like there's no one person. You can't even say that the kidnappers are the antagonistic force because you don't even know who they are. So it's like not knowing the identity of who you're supposed to dislike or who like all of this, you know, plot and everything is supposed to lead up to, who the black swan are fighting against, you know? like. You you don't know it and it's really really annoying. I'm just gonna keep saying that until we finally learn more information. But one thing that I did notice is that book number five is called Lodestar and we got that word for the first time ever in this book when they were talking about a mirror. I don't know what that means but I'm excited to find out. So like I said sometime earlier in this vlog, I think I did put book number three on hold as well And book number three was actually ready for me to read from my library before book two was So I just put off the hold for book three for like a week So hopefully it should come to me sometime relatively soon And then I will continue this vlog and we'll keep reading book three because at this point These are just going to be vlogs about me binging keepers of the lost cities because that's what's happening now. But anyway, I think that's everything that I wanted to say about book two. So as soon as I get the notification that the hold that I have on book three at my library is ready, I will start reading it and I will come back and update you with this vlog. Um, I do want to actually look up, wait, where's my phone? 
Oh, there it is. I'm sitting on a hanger. I just realized that's why I was uncomfortable. Anyway, I want to see what character is on the cover of book three. Uh, I guess I'm assuming Fitz was on the cover. No, Dex had to be on the cover of book one, right? Because, okay, let me look up the covers real quick. So let's play a game where we try to predict who is going to be in the near-death experience at the end of the book based on the cover. All right, let's do this. Book one, this is actually really hard to see because of the light of my phone, so I apologize. But book one, this is clearly Dex. This is Dex. I'm not going to explain it. This is Dex. He has red hair. It's Dex. Um, so let's go back and let's find book two. So book two, ba -ba -da, that's clearly Keith. He has blonde hair. All right, we can just tell by the hair. Is this supposed to be Fitz? Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna assume that that's Fitz. I don't really know. What about book number, this is book number four, right? That's clearly Keith. Who is that? Is that Biana? Again, confused. This is fun. What is this? Oh, Keith again. I don't know who her she is, but okay. Wow, I like that Keith is on like literally all of these covers. I am here for this. All right, is there gonna be some kind of like love triangle between like Keith and, is that supposed to be, what's his name, Fitz and Sophie? Ooh, wait, I didn't get to this cover. Who the heck are these people? What? Who are these people? Wait, is that supposed to be Fitz? He's got blue eyes. Maybe that's Fitz. Who the heck is that? Wow, confused. Okay, so now that we've done a deep dive into the book covers of Keepers of the Lost Cities and I've gotten absolutely nowhere, it's time to log off now. So I will come back when I get the copy of the third book. I can't take myself seriously anymore, someone help me. I'm wearing a onesie while I unbox books that I don't have any room for. What have I become? But anyway, now that we've got the books that I said that I shouldn't get and got anyway, let's do an unboxing. Let, let's open them. Here we go. I got all the books that I shouldn't have gotten and got anyway. I don't know about you guys, but I really don't like the the paper thing that um that comes with the series. So we're just gonna like... These books are so chunky. I love it so much. Look at how thick they are. Oh my god, I feel like I'm reading like massive books. Real talk though, the reason that I actually bought these books was because I looked on my library app Libby and it said that Everblaze, which is the third book in the series, was not going to be delivered to me for another like two or three weeks. And I thought it was only gonna be a week, so that's why I was like, oh, I'll just wait, like, no big deal. But, like, three weeks? I don't wanna have to wait that long to get to the next book. So I just ordered them online so that I could start reading book three. That's, that's the story. There's really no other reason. <laughs> look at, look at how, this is crazy to me, okay? Look at, look. Look at how many books there are in this series. Like, okay, the Shadowhunters world, kinda, you know, there's a lot of books in that. Rick Riordan, there's a lot of books in that but they're all different series. The series themselves are like five, six books, and then there's like a trilogy, and then there's this. So they're all like the same world, but different series. This is one series. And I shouldn't be astounded by that because there are things like The Magic Tree House that are like a bajillion books long, but these are big, big books. These are novels. There are so many pages. I love this cover. It's so pretty. Like the colors, the what like what are they doing? They're free falling. Also, it's called Everblaze. The Everblaze is coming back. So many questions and probably none of them are going to get answered. All right, so we're going to be vlogging out in the living room today because I don't feel like being in my room anymore and also it's only me and my brother at home so I told him to ignore what I'm saying and hopefully he listens. So I started reading Everblaze last night because I just really wanted to know what was going to happen and the preface preface has got me excited. I feel like we're actually going to find things out in this book, which I'm really happy about because as you know, not knowing things has really been pissing me off. Every one of these books starts with a preface that kind of gives you a hint as to what's going to happen at the end of the book. And in this one, it says that we might find out who is behind all of this or at least part of this stuff, which I'm so excited to find out. Oh my gosh. But so far, I'm only on page 161, but 
so far, we've been getting a lot of Keith content and you all know that's what I'm here for. Oh my God, my camera is going to die. No, I just started filming this segment. I'll try to keep my thoughts really quick and get to it before the camera cuts out. But um, as you all know, I love Keith. I do have a feeling that they might be edging into sort of like, you know, again, everybody has a crush on Sophie. Like we know that Dex already has a crush on Sophie, which like Dex to me has never really been in the running. He's always just been kind of like the Simon to the Clary of the story, if that makes sense. So sorry. I just, I'm, I'm not here for Dex right now. You can kind of tell that there's something possibly happening with Keith, which I'm totally here for. I think that there's so many parts of him that we haven't explored yet because of like his family and like, you know, stuff that he doesn't let anybody see and that he keeps hidden. So I'm excited for that. And then Fitz, is just kind of Fitz. I don't know what the hell's happening there. So I'm holding out hope for Keith. I am team Keith, Keith, Keith not Keith. Keith, and I'm here for this. There's nothing that I can really get into right now in the amount of time that it would take before my camera decides to shut off on me. So other than what I've already said, I will just say that we're trying to figure out who these kidnappers are. That's pretty much all that we've gotten at this point. The council is trying to use Sophie's abilities to do stuff. You know, things are not a very fun time right now. Also, this book only picks up two weeks after the last one leaves off. So they're still in year three of school. So I was hoping that each book would be like a full year of school, but it is what it is. But I will say that I am excited to get to the last couple of books because they get slowly older, which which means the last ones possibly maybe might be a bit more like YA. Surprisingly, like these sometimes feel a little bit more YA than middle grade. Some of the conversations these characters have just really confuse me. There's so many different mentions of things that, you know, are particular to this world. And I'm just like having to reread the same paragraph like three times just to make sure I understand that he's talking about this person and this person and this event and this thing and the... Huh, there's a lot. But anyway, okay, I'm gonna stop here before my camera shuts off. I will get back to you with more of my thoughts when I start reading more and more spoilery things later so that I don't get cut off. Okay, you guys, so I promise I haven't been here the entire time. It's 2.45 right now and I have been reading, but I was outside and I did move around. So I haven't just been sitting here all day, even though there's nothing wrong with that, but just letting you know. I'm almost halfway through this book. So I'm getting close to being, well, I don't know if you'd call that close to getting halfway through this book is so chunky but I'm almost there so I wanted to come on here and talk to you guys because I have theories I have theories and I want to talk about them and just go through them a little bit because there's so much that's happening and so many things are being introduced and revealed and also we're still questioning lots of things so I just want to talk some spoilers for a minute so um, here we go so my theory right now I, I, again I'm not sure if this is correct I'm just totally branching out here so Brant right who was Jolie's fiance who went crazy when Jolie died. Is he a pyrokinetic? And when he touched Sophie, he like accidentally burned her, but nobody knew that he was a pyrokinetic because they thought he was talentless because maybe he like hid his talent or something. Was he the one who Fintan taught to use the Everblaze? I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out a way that would tie in the Everblaze with Brant, with Jolie, because clearly there's something, some kind of connection there. They keep bringing up the weird mark that he left on her wrist, and I'm like, okay, clearly there's something wrong, and Elwyn called it a burn, so I think that he might be a secret pyrokinetic. I don't know. In addition, Sophie thinks that Jolie might be her biological mother, which was my theory in the first book that I accidentally got a little mixed up with Prentice. Jolie might possibly be Sophie's biological mother because everybody keeps saying that they look alike. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what the truth is. Also, there's this whole new thing with Fitz. So Fitz is now in the picture because he is going to be Sophie's guide when she brings Fintan's mind back from being broken when she heals him and they need to trust each other so they like shared secrets and now he can read her mind because she trusts him but now she's like really hesitant about it and doesn't know if she really fully trusts him because she's never had anybody get into her head before and in my mind i'm like girl like he's saying that he trusts you just tell him everything tell him like every crazy theory and thought that you've ever had and let him mull over it that way you can just like you know open your mind y'all can have a nice connection like you don't have to worry about anything you know but of course she's scared that her friends are gonna get killed because people keep trying to kill her so that's fun i feel kind of bad for dex even though early on i know that i said that i wasn't 
a Dex fan. I do like him as a person. I just don't like him as a love interest. I don't know how to explain it. He's just that guy that like secretly pines after his friend forever, but like, you know, kind of always expects her to notice and it's just really annoying. But I do feel bad for him. And when he made her the little ring that would like be like a panic button that would alert him on his bracelet, like he's just trying to be in her life and be as important to her as Fitz or Keith. But he doesn't realize that he already is it just in a different way. And so it's, oh my God. One of the things that I love the most so far though about this story, the third one in particular, is how much Edeline content we're getting. Because in the past few books, Sophie has always really gone to Alden or Grady with any of her problems. She's always confided in them. And Edeline is like the mother figure and she feels left out, you know? She, she knows that she's been suffering from grief for a really long time and that she can't really in the past have handled a lot of the horrible things that have put Sophie in danger, but she's trying to make an effort to like be a mother figure and to be supportive and like there for Sophie. And I really, really love that. It's so heartwarming. It makes me so happy. And I just really hope that nothing horrible happens. But yeah, th there was one moment where she like bought Sophie a bunch of like new outfits and dresses to try to like bond with her. It was so cute. Oh, I love how much she's trying. This book is just so fast paced. Like it's nonstop, things are happening. And so I'm just like, I'm here, I'm ready, let's keep going. Okay, you guys, it's 11.41 right now. I don't know why I tried showing you, you can't see it. Um, and I have gotten through so much of this book today. Look at how much I have left. That's not a lot, not a lot left. I am a bit past the midpoint, which was a big turning point that I had not expected to happen. And now I understand why the book is called Everblaze. I do still have some theories and I have some new ideas and ideas that I did have that are no longer going to work out. I like how Sophie and Fitz's relationship is growing and how they're able to like get into each other's heads now and they trust each other and they're like sharing secrets and stuff. I think that that's really great because that's exactly what I wanted to happen. And I'm also kind of worried about Dex and just some of the stuff that he might be doing. I don't know. Also, the thing that I said at the end of book two when I read book two about the council and um, what they're doing. It's kind of like, you know, the pieces are falling into place with my theory and I'm excited for it because as I said before, I really do like stories where the people in power are abusing their power and now we're getting to see you know, whether people are going to fall in line with that or whether people are going to fight back. So I like that. But for spoilers and the theories that I have, I'm gonna start talking about those now. Last time that I was on my vlog, I said that I had a theory that Brant is the secret pyrokinetic, right? Which I still stand by. I think I think that's what it is because every time she was in Fantan's memory, she kept describing the person as somebody who had dark hair. And in my head, I was like listing out all of the possible su suspects, right? Like as soon as you know that like somebody that's close to her is going to betray her, it's like, okay, let's list out all of the random characters who I feel like have not had a major part in the story who could possibly have this double agent, you know, thing going on. That's immediately what happens. So in my head, I'm like, okay, Brant, obviously, because he was my number one choice. Then, honestly, Master Leto, I don't remember what he looks like, whether he has dark hair or not, but he is getting her to trust him. He is trying really hard, especially giving her that amnesty, you know, being nice to her. Like, he's trying really hard, so I'm kind of scared. Also, they said that he had the most votes to be nominated as counselor, so now I'm kind of like, what's going on here? And it is possible for people to have more than one ability, so it is possible for him to have whatever he currently has and then also be a pyrokinetic, like a secret one. I don't know, man. Lots of things are happening in my head as I'm trying to piece together what the hell is happening in this story. There's still a lot of Keith Sophie, Fitz Sophie, Dex Sophie content. I don't know what kind of a love square quadrilateral thing is going on, but um, that's where we're at right now. Still holding out hope in my heart for Keith, but honestly, Fitz is Fitz is slowly climbing his way back up there. Dex still on the down low. Also, he just has a tendency to walk in at the worst times. Like every time that they're having a conversation that it's either secret or involves Dex, Dex walks in and they're like, oh, oh yeah, no, you, you don't wanna know what we were talking about. And that can only last for so long. He is going to flip at some point. 
you have to be prepared for that. Otherwise you tell him everything. Yeah, and the only other thing that I wanted to mention, this vlog is gonna be so long. Oh my God, I can't stop talking. The council is making weapons. Apparently they want to use Dex's invention where he tried to enhance a telepath's ability so that he could talk to Sophie because he was jealous of Fitz, lots of things. Um, but he made this invention and the council is like, oh, but what if you could use it to restrict an ability? And Sophie's like, um, why would you want to restrict an ability? And Dex was like, well, what about people who shouldn't be allowed to have them? And then it's the whole argument about like, if you're born with it, if it's yours, why is somebody going to control you about that? Like, how are you allowed to have it if it's yours? Lots of things can be argued around this. And that's what I'm really looking forward to. Also, I just realized that book four, Never Seen, which... I realize what Never Seen is now is the biggest book out of the five that I currently have. I don't know about six, seven, or eight, but it's the biggest one right now. I'm really looking forward to it. But yeah, I'm gonna stop talking. Like I said, this vlog is going to be so insanely long. I'm sorry, but I hope you guys are sticking around with me. Um, I will finish this book and get back to you, or at least I'll get to a good stopping point between now and the ending and then get back to you when I have more thoughts. But I'm hoping that either one or all of my theories are correct or none of them and that this book is really gonna surprise me. Oh my god, you guys. Holy plot twist. I was not expecting any of this to be happening right now and it is and I don't know how to feel. I am reeling. I don't know what to think right now. So much has just happened in the past like 100 pages and I'm just like thrown for the biggest loop. I will say that none of my theories so far have turned out to be correct at this point, so I'm still holding out hope, um, but a couple of other things happened that I just was not expecting, and I'm really mad that I didn't expect it because they should have been easy. Well, at least one of the two things I didn't expect. The, the second thing I did kind of expect, so that's what was going to happen, but I didn't want it to happen because it sounded horrible. Um, but it did happen and I'm really sad and disgusted. So yeah, suffice to say this book is surprising me in the craziest of ways that I just did not expect. Now I understand what you guys meant when you said the books only get better from here. This is so good. So getting into spoilers as to what I'm talking about, the thing that I was not expecting was Keith's dad to be part of the never scene, which we don't know 100% for sure if that's what it is. Like maybe his mother is part of it. I don't know. But yeah, so the crest, the family crest that his father gave him a couple weeks ago ended up being like a tracker and so that's how the never seen has always been able to find them wherever they go i for some reason was hoping that keith's dad would end up like you know turning a new leaf and would be nice to his son and like would start getting involved and maybe would have some sort of kind of like a redemption in a way um but no he just decided to prove that he's just as bad as everyone thought he was which is great but like i said none of that has been like proven proven yet so i'm still waiting for some kind of ball to drop whether like he gets arrested and he he admits to it or they mind break him or whatever but also I feel extremely bad for Keith through all of this like I just I don't even want to know how he's dealing with this and then the second thing that I did expect was what I talked about last time with the council making weapons they used the silver circlet to restrict Sophie's abilities which I knew in the back of my mind was going to happen I just did not expect the way that it happens like they literally did this in front of everybody and not only that, but they did it in a way that literally made her catatonic for minutes on end until they forced Dex through basically blackmail to get him to do what they want. None of that is council worthy. None of that is leadership worthy. Like what in the world? Like I said, I had expected the council to use that silver thing as like a weapon to restrict abilities. I knew that it was going to end up, you know, coming onto Sophie and because she's the the weird one that nobody knows how to control and they're always looking for a way to control her as if that's what really needs to be done, you know? But like the way that they used Dex, the way that they threatened his family with treason, with exile, the way that they, like that's horrible. He's a 13 year old child. They are grown ass adults. They're probably older than regular grown ass adults because they're probably hundreds of years old. And yet they're literally going to threaten and blackmail a 13 year old child into doing what they want against his friend, mind you, in front of her parents and people who care about her. Like y'all have some balls, I'm just saying. Yeah, so suffice to say, 
I was about to cry <laughs> reading those scenes that was just like heartbreaking in the weirdest and worst way. And now the Black Swan has contacted Keith and Fitz and Bianca, and they're supposed to go to Mount Everest or something crazy and I'm wondering what is going to happen because they're going without Sophie. So I have no idea what is about to go down in this book. I'm kind of scared for it, but also eager for it. And honestly, I might be able to finish this today. This is my phone in here, so ignore that. But I only have this much left, so maybe I'll finish it today. I don't know. I'm just, I'm really scared. I'm really scared at this point. I really did not expect for this middle grade series to go so far off the deep end to literally like disgust me, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm really surprised, but in like a really good way. Like this is a really good book. I was right, I was right, I was right, I was right, I was right. It feels so good to be right all the time. <laughs> That's such a lie. I wasn't right about half the things that I thought were going to be theories, but I was right about one of them, one major one. Also actually two, two of them, oh my God. Uh, I'm so happy I was right. Predicting the end of a book is annoying because it's like you don't want it to be predictable, but then sometimes when you're right, it's the best feeling ever. You solved the puzzle. You got the mystery. So good. Uh. If you can't tell, I finished Everblaze and wow, this was a wild ride. This was a crazy book and I'm so excited to get to book four because this ends it off on a cliffhanger and I'm really, I just, I need to know what is happening. There's so many questions we still don't have answers to. The biggest thing that I loved about this one was the friendships. Ugh, the friendships in this story are so good. The book started off with a group of like seven friends, so it's Sophie, Fitz, Keith, Biana, Dex, and then there was also Marella and Jensi, um, but Marella and Jensi sort of like dropped off midway through the book, so I don't know what's gonna happen with that, but I do like the core group of friends that we have. Dex has redeemed himself in my eyes. He's no longer just like the friend who's pining after Sophie, which like, I mean, he kind of still is, but not in my eyes anymore. Um, and I'm just so excited to see where this group of friends goes on this next journey because we're going to Italy now and I'm excited for it. Into more spoilery things though. So the things that I was right about, if you've obviously read this book, you know what I was right about. But number one, Brant. I feel like that was an easy plot twist that we could guess. And I'm actually really happy that I was right because that was just like the biggest like plot twist that happened in this story. Other thing that I sort of kind of got right. So in the last clip, I was talking about how Keith's dad was the person in the never scene. And I was like, well, it could, maybe it's not Keith's dad. Like it could also just be Keith's mom, maybe. Like he doesn't know which one. It's, they were just assuming that it's his dad. And it was his mom. I was right. That wasn't like a set in stone theory that I had, but it was just like a little like, well, what if it's this person? And I was right. So Keith's mom is a part of the never scene. How can she do all of that crap that she did to her son? That's just cruel. That's horrible. What is happening? The things that I'm looking forward to in book four, I'm looking forward to, again, the friendships, the group, the teamwork, the, you know, bickering and all of the things. Looking forward to more of Keith calling Sophie cute offhandedly as if it doesn't matter. <laughs> the number of times that he was like, you're cute when you're annoyed. You're cute when you're smart. You're cute when you're thinking about stuff. Like, I loved it. So looking forward to the friendships, looking forward to learning more about the Black Swan, more about the Never Seen, because the book is literally called Never Seen. So I'm excited for that. And most of all, I just want to get to the part where we get to Prentice. We get to, to know more about Prentice and what he is hiding and what, you know, we, we need to wake him up. And I really want Wiley to be a part of that as well because Wiley clearly knows something. You know, he knew that Sophie was supposed to wake up Prentice. And so it's like, we need to know. Like, we, we, we wanna know what's gonna happen. Oh, I'm really excited for them to be on the run. They're on the run from the law. I am excited. We are now outlaws, y'all. We are 13, 14, 15 year old outlaws running from the council, running from punishment. I'm ready for this. So I don't know when I will get to book four. I'm hoping that it'll be soon. I feel like I should stop reading these for now and focus on other books. But other than all of that, I think that is going to be it for this video. So if you wanna follow me on any of my socials, all my handles are in the description. Thank you so much for watching this insanely long vlog. This is probably going to be such a long vlog, I'm so sorry. And I will catch you later. Bye.